In this Unreal Engine 5 AI patrol and chase tutorial, we're going to create an enemy AI which patrols the map and then chases the player when the player walks close to that enemy AI. So here I have a project and if I press play, this is just a simple project where I have some basic character movement and I can walk around and we're going to create the enemy. For the enemy, I'm using this pack here from the Unreal Engine 5 marketplace, the City of Brass Enemies. And this pack is for free if you wish to download it you can add it to your project or you can simply use your own project if you're interested in in-depth game development courses please visit my website pixelhelmet.com which you can also find in the description below now in unreal engine for ai to move around the map we need to add something called navigation mesh bounce volume so you can click up here Go to volumes and add this one called navigation mesh bounce volume now for this volume here you can drag it down with the move tool and just hit the ground with it now if you press p on the keyboard you can preview this navigation mesh bounce volume so clicking on p you can hide the preview and click on p again you can view it so this area defines where the ai can walk around inside of your map and to increase this area, if you click on it and go to the details panel, you can increase the X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to increase mine. And when you are satisfied, you can click on this one here. It creates it automatically, the recast nav mesh. This one, if you click on it and go down here in the generation, you can actually edit settings here so you can adjust how far up they can walk here and also adjust the distance between these uh, these objects here so they don't get stuck. For example, this agent radius, I can increase it. And for example, if I say 500, you can see it, it increases the radius from the object. So obviously this is too large. So if you write 50, 60, 70, you can see it gets further and further away from these edges. So you can uh, play around here and trying to adjust it. And when you are satisfied, let's continue. To create the enemy, I'm going to right click here, making a new folder called enemy. And inside of here, right click, blueprint class. And now let's select this character blueprint class. I'm going to call this one BP enemy. Going inside of this blueprint, let's click on the mesh. Let's go ahead in the skeletal mesh asset. Let's add an enemy. I'm going to use from the pack, this one called Sploder. And for this one, I have to drag it down and realign it. So the best way to do this is going to the right view over here. So not the perspective view. And I'm going to readjust this capsule here so it fits my character. So the capsule height. I'm going to increase it slightly, taking this character, bring it down. If your character snaps around, you can disable the snapping here. You can see now it's enabled. Now it's disabled. And it's a lot easier sometimes when it's disabled. So you can adjust them as you like okay something like this i'm satisfied clicking on this capsule i can decrease the sides here something like this so going back to the perspective mode i now need to add an animation so clicking on the mesh again over here instead of using an animation blueprint i'm going to use an animation asset and clicking over here i have an an animation it's called passive walk so i'm using this one called charger passive walk from this pack here and also for the walk speed for the character, I'm going to increase this guy's walk speed in the character movement, going to the max walk speed. And I'm going to set it to something like 130. That's up to you how fast you want your enemy to walk around. So now to make the enemy walk around, let's go to the event graph. And inside of here, let's delete all of these standard events. Let's right click and make a custom event. Let's call it move to random location. And we're going to use a function called, if you right click here and search for get random location in navigable radius. And what this means, it's going to get a random location inside of this green area where you place your navigation mesh bounce volume. So it's trying to find a random point here and it's going to make that enemy walk. So get a random location in navigable radius. For the origin, we just want to find a point from wherever this enemy is standing. So let's right click and say get actor location. So this is the origin where we will start searching for a point. For the radius, let's just say we're searching within 1000 units. Now the next function that is very important is AI move to this one here 
And now we found a random location we want to move to. Now we have to move this AI. So this is the destination. This is the random location we just found. And it's going to ask, who are you moving? I'm going to drag from here and say self because we're just moving this enemy here. This is a self-reference. And when it successfully moves and reaches that point, this random location you have given it, I just wanted to find another location and just keep moving around. So I'm going to drag from here and just call this event again, move to random location. Okay, so we found a random, lo a random point at the navigation mesh bounce volume. And then we move this AI and at, when it moves and reaches that point it found, it's going to move again. It's going to find another point. All right, so in order for this to work, remember, we have to call this event somewhere in the code, else your game doesn't know when you want to run this code. So we have to run this event somewhere. So let's right click here and say begin play. So let's use the begin play event. The begin play is simply what happens if you begin playing the game. I want to move to a random location. I want to move my enemy to a random location. So it's going to run this code and my enemy is going to find a point, move to it and go ahead and find a point again and loop this over and over again. So let's go over here. I'll take my enemy, place the enemy on the ground, going to click play. And now you can see here, this is my enemy. My enemy's walking around. He's going to find a new point when he reaches the point he already found. For the chasing, let's open up the enemy and let's click add on the components and search for pawn sensing. So this one, pawn sensing, click on it. So for the pawn sensing, we have to adjust this peripheral vision angle. So if you click on the viewport, you can see here in the viewport, the angle for his vision, where, which he can see us. So you can increase and decrease it. You can see what's happening. To see it better, you can place the enemy here in the level and trying to adjust this uh, peripheral vision to your liking. Maybe something like 75 for me. And you can also adjust this one if you want to the side radius. That is the radius in which the enemy can see you. So this one is adjustable, this one as well. So let's go back to the event graph. And over here, if you click on the pawn sensing, you have this event down here on C pawn. So what happens when the enemy sees the player? So I'm going to drag here and say sequence. I'm going to make a sequence node, which just organizes my code. So first what I want to do, I want to take my mesh here and I'm going to say play animation just like that, because I want to change my walking animation to a running animation. So my enemy runs after me. So here I'm going to search for sprint and I'm going to choose this one called charger alert sprint. And then I'm going to take my character movement for the enemy. And I'm going to set the max walk speed so the enemy walks faster. And I'm going to set it to something like 600. So now the enemy is sprinting after us. Next, what we want to do, again, we want to use this one called AI Move 2. So now we change the animation. We change the speed of the character or the enemy. Now we want the enemy to chase after us. So let's strike from here and say AI Move 2. So we're going to use it again. Now, again, who is moving? This is the enemy moving. So let's strike from here and write self. So a self reference again. And instead of using this location, this random location here as the destination, now the pawn, the player is the destination. So let's drag from here. This is the player and the player is the target actor. Now with this code, the enemy is going to chase us forever, but I don't want the enemy to chase us forever. If we hide a place, for example, behind the wall, we want to the enemy to go back and it's like the enemy never found us. So I'm going to drag here and say re-triggable delay. And now we have to specify, for example, if you hide behind the wall for, let's say, two seconds, then the enemy will lose interest in you after two seconds and go back to moving around randomly. So after two seconds, for example, you can put this as much as you want. After two seconds, let's take these here, the animation and the max walk speed, and let's change it back to whatever we had it before. So here, the, the passive walk. Let me click here, search for passive walk. And for the movement speed, our default movement speed is set to 130. So let's set it back to 130. And then I want to, again, just move around like I did before. So let's call move to random location. 
So there is a slight bug and I will show you what the bug is, but let's click on play. So now the enemy chases after us if we go in front of the enemy. However, you can see that the animation is lagging a bit and this is actually because it is playing the animation again and again. Because if you click on the pawn sensing, this sensing interval, this running animation is changing every 0.5 seconds. So two times a second this is changing. And we don't want to do that. So we, we just want to change this one time and then it's going to chase us. And when it's finished, it's going to walk around. And then we want to do it again whenever it senses us again. So let's strike from here and say do once. So we're only going to do it once and not zero point every 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so it's going to do this once now and we have to reset this at some point. So let me make a new custom event called can sprint again. And I'm going to connect it here. And then I'm going to call this one whenever it stops chasing us. So over here, just right before moving around, I can say can sprint again. And with this custom event, we're going to open this do once. This is what reset means. It means you can do this again. So we have to reset this before it can work again. So let's connect this back here. And if you want the animation to be less laggy, you can click on this pawn sensing and set the interval to 0 0.1, for example. Just remember, it's going to take more resources because now it's updating 10 times a second. And for these animations, let's click on looping and looping just to make sure they are looping. Compile and click on play and let's see what happens. So now they're just walking around and whenever they turn around and see us, they will chase after us just like that. And we can run around. You can see they're chasing us. If I run very fast and hide behind the wall, they should lose interest after two seconds. And you can see they have lost interest in us. And you can also adjust the value of how far they can see us. Right now, he cannot see us because the peripheral vision is set like this. Now, this guy saw us. If we run away for two seconds, the guy cannot see us anymore. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and setting the alert on so you can see more useful tutorials from this channel. Again, you can visit pixelhelmet.com if you want in-depth courses or if you want me to help you out with your project, you can also go to my Discord and you can find everything in the description below. I'll hope to see you in the next tutorial.